So we're talking a lot about fish food and um, you talked about immunostimulants uh, in the fish food. Um, what advantage do they offer to fish keepers? Immunostimulants are a fascinating sort of wide, wide variety of, of natural agents that that have some impact to enhance various aspects of the, the immune system of the fish. And in the last sort of 20 years or so, there's so much research going on into these because, you know, primarily coming from fish farming, but then other forms of farming are, are looking at this as well. You know, poultry production, pig production, same the same sort of research is going on. And even in um, human health, um, people are interested in immunostimulants for, for, for their own health. And this sort of concept of nutraceuticals, you know, things you can take in the diet that can then have a beneficial health effect. But in the fish world, there's a wide range of natural, naturally derived compounds that um, will then have effects on the immune system. And the, the research literature is chock full of, of, of examples of this. It's probably easiest if I um, show you one on, a, on one particularly interesting group of immunostimulants called the, the beta-glucans. Um, we use beta-glucans in lots of our foods. When we see on a, a pot of tetra food that it's got active formula um, in it, this has got beta-glucan amongst other agents. And there's uh, so a lot of research of um, beta-glucans being used in, in other animal nutrition, indeed in human health as well. But that doesn't mean, say, immunostimulants are beta-glucans. That is one of many, many examples of beta-glucans. I mean, there's, you know, levomizole and um, uh, moss and foss and all sorts of other all sorts of other agents. Generally, what, what they've got in common is that they're generally things that are not digested by the fish. So they, they don't form part of the nutrition of the fish. So the fish lacks the enzymes to break down the immunostimulant itself. So the immunostimulant then sort of lies dormant, you know, lies in the, the intestinal tracts, and it could be then uptaken into the bloodstream. The fish can't do much with it, but then sometimes they can have an effect on certain aspects of the immune system, um, and sometimes they can have an effect on the resident bacterial population in the fish. So this is then taken from a study, as, again, I'll stress the point, there are many, many studies of, of, the, of this ilk in the research literature. But what this is showing us then is at the top here, we've got um, catfishes, Ictilurus punctatus, that have been fed um, beta-glucans in their diet um, or a control diet that has got no beta-glucans. And then we're looking at various aspects of the immune system. So there's an enzyme called lysozyme. Um, now we produce lysozyme in our, in our sweat. We produce lysozyme in our saliva. It's just an enzyme that is, it helps to break down um, organic matter and, and, you know, and bacteria as well. So, you know, markedly antibacterial lysozyme is. So producing more lysozyme is generally a good thing. And we can see that those fish that were fed glucans over three weeks produce significantly more lysozyme. Um, here we can then see um, the uh, something called the um, nitro blue tetrazoleum assay. This is then just looking at the ability of cells to produce reactive oxygen. And this is an important sort of um, part of the chemical warfare of the immune system. Cells like um, you know, white blood cells like macrophages, if they encounter a pathogen, one of the defences they can have against them, uh, or you know, other white blood cells like neutrophils as well, they can release sort of peroxides, um, which are you know not sort of having a bleaching effect on the on on a pathogen. So having a increased level of nitro blue tetrazoleum assay, assay results is just showing us that we have got cells that are producing more reactive oxygen species. In other words, their activity has been enhanced by the glucan in their in their diet. Um, down here then, what we can see, the ov overall effect then is, you know, ultimately we can say, how are the, how do the fish deal with a challenge infection? So we've got some catfish that have then been infected with a pathogen, Eremonas hydrophila. Um, and then, you know, it's rather harsh, but seeing how many of those fish survive, what's the mortality rate in those fishes that are given that challenge infection? And those that were fed the glucan in their diet, um, there was a significantly lower mortality rate because their immune system has been enhanced. So the literature is just absolutely full of 
full of research like this, we don't fully understand exactly what's going on at the sort of molecular cell signaling level to make the immune system more enhanced when we add this particular ingredient to the food. But the research that it's beneficial is absolutely overwhelming. What we can't do is say that because this happens in Aroma, in, in Ichulurus punctatus catfish, then it happens in all fish. But the research is being done on a wide range of fish, and we can put all that research together and start to build a picture that immunostimulants have got a serious benefit for, for fish. So we can either have sort of direct activity on, on cells of the immune system, as we've got here, and then, and, you know, as, as, as I've mentioned before, another way of, of, of sort of improving the immune system of the fish is to bring on their resident gut microbes. Um, and rather than then giving them a culture of good gut microbes, and we, when we might take a sort of commercial yogurt drink that's supposed to be um, probiotic and have those right bacteria in, and we hope that a few of them make it through the, 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 the stomach and the, the acidic environment of the stomach, and we hope a few can get through to get into the intestine where they need to be, um, rather than inoculating that way, what we can do is add ingredients to the food which bring on those beneficial bacteria. Again, they've got to be ingredients that are not digestible to the fish. So the most recent development for our foods has been the addition of a, um, a compound called inulin, to the diet. And inulin is a very short chain sugar um, that comes from chicory root. Uh, and that inulin is in the diet. It's not digestible to the fish. So that inulin would just pass all the way through the fish. It's in at a very small level, but the bacteria, certain bacteria that live in the gut of the fish that are beneficial for the fish, they feed on the inulin. So they've suddenly got something in the diet that's just for them. So their population comes on. If we've got these beneficial bacteria population is increased, that can help to keep pathogenic bacteria at bay. But also in ways that we don't understand, there's a communication going on between the fish's immune system and these bacteria um, to enhance aspects of the non-specific immune system of the fish. This general vigilance and protection that that, that, that makes up the sort yeah the, the, the non-specific immune system. What we're not talking about here is sort of antibody-mediated response that we're all familiar with um, in this era of COVID vaccinations and things. That's a completely different arm of the immune response that's in that case specific to a particular antigen. You know in the case of us with our COVID vaccines, it's, you know, it's antigens on the spike protein of the coronavirus. Here, we're talking about the general non-specific protection, the stuff that you know, just raises the vigilance, the, the general protection that the fish has against invasion. Um, and it's that that immunostimulants work on rather than the antibody response. Um, but what, what we do know is such an incomplete jigsaw puzzle at the moment. So much research is being done to try and understand this, but the benefit of these agents, these immunostimulant agents going into the food is incontrovertible. And we've been adding, we've been enhancing our immunostimulant cocktail in Tetra Foods for many, many years, and there's lots more research to be done. And if we're having this conversation in another 10 years time, I'll be talking about the new latest developments which have gone into our diet. So this, this continual um, research and development and product improvement is is vital for us.